Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how automatic reclosing works using the SCL351S protective relay as an example. So by automatic reclosing, I mean a condition where it relay sends an automatic close to a breaker following a protective trip. Now this is helpful of course because many faults are temporary, so you can automatically close the breaker following a protective trip to restore the system to its normal configuration. Now sometimes faults are permanent though, so the relay will see the fault after it has closed back then automatically and it will trip back again. Now the relay may try to go through several of these reclose attempts and if the fault is permanent, then it will eventually go to lockout and the breaker will remain open. Now the number of these reclose attempts or reclosing shots is different by application. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a scheme that has three reclosing shots using the SL351S. Now before we go deeper into how automatic reclosing schemes work, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We post videos here regularly about power engineering and power system protection and control. And if you wanna learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. I'll leave a link to those courses in the description below. All right, so let's see how we can set up an automatic reclosing scheme using the SCL351S relay. Now, before we go into the settings per se, it's important to understand at a high level the different states that the reclosing scheme can be in. Now, generally there are three states. These are the reset state, the cycle state, and the lockout state. Now I have the instruction manual for the SEL 351 s relay over here. So let me go to page 294. And here we have the general operation of the reclosing scheme in the SEL 351S. And again, we have three states, the reset state, the reclose cycle state, and the lockout state. Now the reset state is a normal operating state when the reclosing scheme is ready to go through its sequence. Now for the relay to be in the reset state, the breaker has to have been closed for some time, which is settable. A typical setting for that is 60 seconds. So basically when the breaker is closed and holds for 60 seconds, then we enter the reset state and we are ready to go through the reclosing sequence if we get a protective trip. Now the cycle state is the state that we go into when a trip happens if the reclose initiation was successful. Now this is the state where we are during the reclosing closing sequence, which can be several shots like I mentioned before. Now a shot in this context means a closing command that is sent to the breaker. And as I mentioned before, we'll have three shots for the example that we're going to do in this video. And then lastly, we also have the lockout state. Now this is the state that we're going to go into if all the reclosing attempts have been unsuccessful or if the reclose initiation wasn't successful as well. Now there are also other conditions that will cause this reclosing scheme to go into the lockout state. For example, let's say that the breaker over opens without a reclose initiation, as would happen if an operator manually opens the breaker, then the relay will go from the reset state to the lockout state without going through the cycle state. Now kind of on that note, it's important to note that the reclosing scheme doesn't necessarily go from one state to another in a specific order. It may go, for example, from the reset state to the lockout state. It can go from the cycle state back to the reset state without going to lockout. So it doesn't necessarily have to follow a reset cycle lockout sequence. Now what I have over here on the screen again is a figure from the instruction manual that kind of tells you the overall operation of the reclosing scheme. And in here, again, you can see the three states. We have the reset state, we have the cycle state, and we have the lockout state. And then these lines over here kind of tell you the conditions for which we can go from one state to the other. So as you can see, we can go from the reset state to the cycle state. We can also go back from cycle to reset. We can go from cycle to lockout, and we can also go from reset straight to lockout or from lockout back to reset. The only transition that is not allowed here, as you can see over here, is that we cannot go from the lockout state to the cycle state. So again, here the reset state means the reclosing scheme is ready to go through its reclosing sequence. The cycle state means the reclosing scheme is actively going through the reclosing sequence. And the lockout state means that the reclosing sequence will not happen even if we get a protective trip. Now let's take a look at another figure in the instruction manual that goes over an example on how this sequence operates. So that's actually on page 298. And it's this figure that I have over here. Again, this is an example that's in the instruction manual. We're going to go over a separate example later on. So this example has two shots. And again, remember that when I say shot, I mean an automatic reclosure by the relay. Now you can see here that we start from the reset state over here and the breaker has been closed for some time prior to this chart to start time. And so you can see that over here, the 52A relay orbit is picked up prior to this chart even starting. Now then we get the first trip over here and this trip is going to be what we're going to call the reclose initiate in other words we're going to use relay orbit trip to initiate the reclosing sequence in the relay this reclose initiate signal is called the 79 
our eye and we're going to talk about that later in the video and this reclose initiate is also supervised by another equation which is 79 ris which we're also going to talk about later in the video but basically that's the reclose initiate supervision which will cause the reclosing scheme to go immediately to the lockout state if it is not met when we get the reclose initiate signal so we would go straight from reset to lockout without going through the cycle state. Now that's not what's shown in this figure over here, but I just want to mention that again, we don't necessarily have to go from reset to cycle. We could go from reset straight to lockup. In this example that I have on the screen, they're actually going through the entire sequence. Now in this example, again, we have two open interval timers because we have two shots for the scheme. Each open interval timer is for each one of the reclosure attempts. Now in this case, they are set to 30 cycles and 600 cycles. And you can see that over here and over here. So these are the two open interval timers one is set to 30 and the settings for the reclosing scheme in this relay are set in cycles so that's 30 cycles for the first shot and 600 cycles for the second shot so basically 0.5 seconds for the first shot and 10 seconds for the second shot now what this means is that following a successful reclose initiation if the timers are not stalled which we're going to talk about later on we will wait 30 cycles to issue the first reclose attempt so you can see that is over here so basically between the trip and the close, we wait 30 cycles, which again is 0.5 seconds. Now, if we close the breaker and then trip again, like we can see in this example, the relay will then go to the second reclose attempt and it's gonna wait 600 cycles for that second attempt. So again, you can see another trip over here and you can see the close command over here and you can see that the time between when the trip drops out, this point over here, and the close command, this point over here, is 600 cycles, so 10 seconds. Now, this is typical, by the way, your first reclose attempt is usually shorter than the subsequent ones. And this is because if the first fast reclose attempt was unsuccessful, you might want to give it a little bit longer before the second try. Now, the last thing that I want to point out in this example is that we see that after the second reclose attempt, the relay trips again. So we get another trip over here. And we then go to the lockout state, as you can see over here since all of our attempts have been unsuccessful. Now at this point, the breaker will remain open until an operator manually closes the breaker back in, usually after determining the cause of the fault and making sure that it isn't present anymore and making any repairs if necessary. All right, so now that we've gone through an example on how this works from the instruction manual, let's see how we can program a reclosing scheme that has three reclosing shots in the settings file. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in detail about the different reclosing logic equations. All right, so what I have over here are default settings for an SEL 351S relay. And again, in this video, I'm gonna focus on the reclosing scheme settings. But of course, if you were to develop these settings for a real life application, you will need to program all the settings in the settings file, including the protection elements, the trip and close equations, the app contacts, any alarms that you might wanna have, display points, etc. I just wanna point out that in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the reclosing scheme settings only. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to group one, set one, and then let me expand this and we're gonna go here to reclosing relay. And here is where we configure the timers for the reclosing relay or the reclosing scheme. Here we kind of use reclosing relay and reclosing scheme kind of interchangeably. And we'll see where to program the reclosing equations later on. So the reclose initiate, the reclose initiate supervision, all of those equations, we're gonna see that later on. Here, we only program the timers for the scheme. So as I mentioned before, for this example, we're gonna implement a reclosing scheme that has three reclosing attempts, so three shots. And and the first thing that we need to do, of course, is to program the enable for the reclosing scheme. You can see that over here, E79, you can set this either to no if you don't want any reclosing done in this relay. You can also set it one through four if you want different number of shots. You can do just one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots. Again, for this example, we're gonna do three shots. And notice here that we also have the option to implement settings C1, through C4 over here. These are the same as one through four with the difference that if the reclose supervision is not met, the reclosing scheme proceeds to the next shot instead of going to lockout. Now this kind of mimics older electromechanical reclosing relays. So we're not gonna use that function for this example. We're just gonna set this to three. And of course, when we do that, you can see now that we have these three open interval timers available. If I switch this to one, let's say for example, these two go away. So you can see that that kind of matches what you select over here. If I select three, now we have the three open interval timers available. Now we're gonna program for this example, the reclosing attempts to be five seconds, then 60 seconds, then 60 seconds. So the first open interval timer is gonna be 300 cycles. That's five seconds. And then the 
next two, I'm gonna program those to 3600, so 60 seconds. And remember again that these settings are in cycles. And of course, for this example, I'm assuming that we're working with a 60 hertz system. Now, what this means is that following the first trip, the relay will wait five seconds to issue the first automatic close. Again, we have 300 cycles or five seconds for the first open interval timer. Then if the relay trips again, after it closes for the first time, it will proceed to the second shot or the second open interval and it's going to wait for 60 seconds before issuing another close. And that's of course this setting over here. If the relay trips a third time, then the third and last shot will also be 60 seconds. So this setting over here, 60 seconds after the trip. And then after that, if the relay trips for a fourth time, then we will go to lockout because we don't have another reclosing shot. So we have only three. So on the fourth trip, we go straight to lockout. Now we also have these timers over here, which we of course need to program as well. The first one is this one, 79 RSD. That's the reset time from the cycle state. Then we have the reset time from the lockout state and we have the reclose supervision time limit. So let's talk about those three in more detail. This first one, 79 RSD, again, is the reset time from the cycle state this is the time that the relay will wait to go back to the reset state after a successful reclose attempt so in other words if the relay recloses automatically and holds meaning that it does not trip again then after 30 seconds so 1800 cycles it will go back to the reset state and be ready to go through the entire sequence again if there's another reclose initiate so i'm going to leave that at default 1800 cycles which is 30 seconds the next one is the reset time from the lockout state this is the time the relay will wait to go into the reset state after it has been in the lockout state so for example if the breaker was opened manually the relay would have gone into the lockout state and after the breaker is manually closed back in, they really will wait this long to go into the reset state and be ready to go through the reclosing sequence if there's a reclose initiate. So kind of similar to this one, but of course this is from the lockout state instead of the reclose cycle state. So I'm gonna program this to 60 seconds. So that's 3,600 cycles. And then lastly, we have the reclose supervision time limit, 79 CLSD. And what this setting means is that after an open interval times out, it really then checks to see if setting 79 CLS is true. Now that setting is a reclose supervision logic, which we're gonna talk about later on in the video. But basically if you wanted to have some further checks to be done before issuing a close after the open interval has timed out, you would program that equation into the setting 79 CLS. And then this timer, 79 CLSD, becomes a timer for allowing a set amount of time for that condition to become true. So if you set this to zero, which is typical, the relay checks 79 CLS immediately after the open interval timer times out. And if the condition is not true, then the relay goes to lockout. So we'll leave this at the default setting, which is zero cycles. All right, so again, we have open interval one, which is our timer for shot one, open interval two, two, timer for shot two, and open interval three, timer for shot three. Then we have the reset time from the cycle state, reset time from the lockout state, and the recall supervision time limit, which in this example we're not using. All right, so now that we have programmed all the timers for the reclosing relay, next we need to go into the logic equations for the reclosing scheme, which is gonna ensure that this functions properly. So those are under group one, logic one, and then over here on the close reclose logic. And it's a little bit further down over here. So you can see over here, reclosing relay equations. These are all the equations that are gonna determine when we do a reclose initiate, what conditions we need to meet for the reclose initiate to go through, what conditions we need to meet for the close to go through and so on and so forth. So these are just several equations that determine the operation of the reclosing scheme. All right, so first let's talk about the reclose initiate equation, 79RI, and we're gonna set this to trip, which is the default setting. And basically this is what tells the relay when to initiate the reclosing sequence. The default here again is fine for most applications and that is trip, meaning anytime this relay declares a trip condition, it will initiate the reclosing sequence. Note here though, that if you had some external conditions for which you also wanted to initiate reclosing, you would program that here as well. So for example, say that you had another relay that also issues a protective trip to this breaker that you're doing reclosing for. And for those, you also want to go through the reclosing sequence. You would then wire an output from that relay to an input on this relay that picks up every time that relay trips. 
So every time the other relay trips and trips the breaker, it also lets this relay know that it has tripped so that we can initiate reclosing. And again, you would then include that input into this equation over here so that the reclosing sequence is also initiated every time either relay trips. So for example, you could do trip and then do or and then the other input, which is the trip from the other relay. Again, for this case, I'm just assuming that we only have one relay that is tripping this breaker. So I'm just gonna leave that to trip. The next equation is the reclose initiate supervision, 79 RIS. And these are conditions that will validate the reclose initiate signal. In other words, when we get a reclose initiate signal as programmed over here in 79 RI, the relay also checks for these conditions. And if they are not met, then the relay also goes to lockout. If they are met though, it then proceeds with a reclosing sequence. So a common setting here is breaker closed or cycle state, which is this default setting over here. And basically we need the breaker closed orbit so that upon the first protective trip, we proceed with the reclosing sequence. And we also need the 79CY, this relay orbit over here tells us that we're in the cycle state. We also need that because we want the subsequent trips to also go through. And that's of course only valid if we have multiple reclosing shots. Now notice here that, for example, that if the breaker is already open initially and reclosing has not been initiated and the relay issues the trip, then the reclose sequence would not be initiated. So again, these are conditions that kind of validate this equation over here. So in addition to getting the reclose initiate signal, the relay checks for the reclose initiate supervision to see if the reclose initiate is valid. Then we have this equation over here, 79 DTL. These are specific conditions for which we want the relay to go into the lockout state. Now note that this overrides all of the other settings. So for example, if 790 TL is a logical one, then the relay will not go through the reclosing sequence, even if we get the reclose initiate and the reclose initiate supervision is true. So once we're in lockout, the relay will remain in that state until the breaker closes and the reset timer from lockout times out. Now something common here is to, for example, drive to lockout when there is a manual opening of the breaker. And that's of course, because if an operator has manually opened the breaker, you don't wanna go through the reclosing sequence. In other words, if it was an intentional open manually, either through SCADA or through a local operator, you of course don't want it to automatically reclose in. Now for this example, I'm just gonna assume that we're gonna have a SCADA open command. That's this really a bit over here, OC, that stands for open command. So basically what I'm saying here is when we get a SCADA open command, go straight to lockout. Now you could also program other functions over here. For example, you could put other logic such as manual disabling of the reclosing scheme if you had that configured either through the front panel of the relay or through some other means. Essentially, you could have a enable disable of the reclosing scheme and you can program this equation such that when you're disabled, you drive the relay's reclosing scheme to lockout. All right, we then have this equation, drive to last shot. This is an equation to force the reclosing scheme to go to the last shot automatically and skip all of the other reclosing attempts. So in this case, we have three reclosing shots. We can tell it, don't go through shot one, don't go through shot two, go straight to shot three. And we're gonna leave this at the default setting, which is 79 lockout. The next setting is skip shot. This is similar kind of to the 79 DLS equation, the drive to last shot equation, but this equation forces the relay to skip a shot. So instead of going to the last shot, we're just gonna skip one shot. Now we won't use this function in this example, so we'll leave this at the default setting of zero. Then we have the stall timer. This equation basically tells the relay to stall the open interval timer. So in other words, the open interval timer will not be timing if this equation is a logical one. Now we'll leave this at the default setting of trip so that we don't start timing until the trip goes away after the breaker opens and we've cleared a fault. We also have this setting over here, block reset timing. This is similar to the stall timer. This logic tells the relay to block the timing to go from lockout or cycle states to the reset state. Now, unlike the stall timer, which we have over here, this block reset timing blocks timing and it has to start over if the conditions are met again. So again, this stall timer just simply stalls the open interval timer. Basically, if you have an open interval of let's say five seconds and this condition becomes a logical one at two seconds and then it becomes a logical zero, then it will continue timing where left off. However, for the block reset timing, that's not the case. If you get this equation, to become a logical one during the reset timing and then it goes away, you're gonna start timing again. So it doesn't stall the reset timing, it rather just blocks it and then you have to start over. So that's just a distinction between the stall and the block reset timing. They kind of work differently from each other. Now we're also gonna leave this at the default setting, which is trip. Next we have the sequence coordination. This equation is used for sequence coordination schemes where there are downstream reclosers to coordinate with. For this example, we're gonna assume that there's no downstream reclosers, so we'll leave this at 
the default setting of zero. And then lastly, we have the recall supervision equation that I talked about previously. Again, this setting kind of goes hand in hand with the 79 CLSD timer. Let's go back to that. So this, so this timer over here, that timer is related to this equation over here, the recall supervision equation. Now, again, this is the condition that has to be met in order for the relay to issue a close command following an open interval timer timeout. So in other words, let's say that we get a successful reclose initiation, which again is true if both 79RI and 79RIS are a logical one, then the relay will go into its first open interval, five seconds or 300 cycles in our example. And that's of course provided that the 79STL, the stall timer is not picked up. Then the relay will, after five seconds, seconds complete its first open interval timer and at that point it will check to see if this condition 79 CLS is a logical one and if it is it will proceed to issue a close command if it's not then it will go to lockout now by setting this to one which is the default setting we're basically saying that we just want to go ahead and issue a close once the open interval times out now lastly and something that's important to note is that the automatic close signal from the reclosing scheme is routed through the close relay orbit. So again, we programmed all of our equations over here. We set our timers for the reclosing relay here on the reclosing relay under set one. And we also set all the equations for the reclosing scheme over here under logic and reclose logic. So now our scheme is configured. The next thing that we need to do, of course, is to make sure that the close signal gets to the breaker. Now, what I want to point out here, and let me actually go back to the instruction manual, and this is on page 281. What I want to point out over here, and this figure over here is the close logic for the relay. What I want to point out over here is that the reclosing schemes close signal is over here. So you can see over here, reclosing relay open interval timeout qualified by 79 CLS that feeds into this OR gate, which goes through to the close equation over here. So again, what I want to point out over here is that now that we've configured the reclosing scheme, we need to make sure that the close signal gets to the breaker and we can use this relay orbit over here, close program that relay orbit into an output that is wired physically to the close coil of the breaker. And that will make sure that the reclosing schemes close signal gets to the breaker and actually closes the breaker physically. All right, so that's how you set up an automatic reclosing scheme using the SEL 351S relay. If you want to learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. I'll leave a link to those courses in the description below. And as always, if you liked this video and you found it helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.